But let's look at some individual studies. Here's a recent uh, result reported by a company in Israel. This is an electrolytic study using palladium as the cathode, heavy water as the electrolyte. For a period of time while the cathode material was being loaded or reacted with deuterium, uh, no excess heat was found. And here it's a little bit of excess heat was seen. The power was increased, but not in excess of one watt. So we're looking at a very small amount of input power. But at the same time, the amount of excess power on this axis increased dramatically, reaching an amount of 34 watts. This is rather erratic uh, and unstable power uh, that's being produced, but nevertheless it is significantly in excess of the error in the calorimeter. The uh, company uses an interesting technique. They apply what they call a super wave. This is a high frequency complex uh, voltage that's applied to the current passing through the cell. And this is uh, found to have a desirable effect on the heat production. Well, these graphs show uh, a different kind of effect that's discovered by Arata and Zhang in Japan. They uh, place in a tube of palladium, palladium black, which is very finely divided palladium that has been pre-tested. And this palladium black is sealed in the palladium tube. The tube is placed in an electrolytic cell containing heavy water. A current is passed so that the heavy water decomposes on the palladium tube, which is the cathode. And gradually, the, very, the deuterium diffuses through the wall and builds up a pressure of very pure deuterium gas within the tube that surrounds the uh, palladium black. Now you notice that for a significant length of time, nothing happened as this pressure built up. But then the excess power began to increase and, and then increase rather dramatically to as much as 24 watts of excess power. This is much in, ex in excess of the error of the calorimeter. If the sample is electrolyzed in, in light water, uh, th this effect does not happen. So you can see th that simply exposing an active material to pressurized deuterium is sufficient to generate excess power. And I might add, uh, helium and some tritium has also been found to be produced by this reaction. Well, in addition to uh, many um, individual examples that I don't have time to show, there are also a number of patterns that we can uh, look at. The deuterium to palladium ratio turns out to be very important. Everyone who makes the measurement sh finds out that this ratio has a big effect on heat production. And I'll show some examples. If, if one uses a uh, electrolytic cell, the applied current also changes the amount of heat production. People have uh, found out that um, the batch of palladium is also very important. If one's lucky to uh, obtain a batch of palladium that's active, then most pieces within that batch will produce excess power. On the other hand, if you're unlucky, which is most of the time, the batch, none, none of the ex pieces within that batch will produce excess energy. There's also an effect of temperature. The higher the temperature, the more heat's produced. Uh, that's been found uh, in, in ordinary D2O uh, electrolytic action, but also infused salt, which, which I'll show you. The effect of electrolysis time is important. It takes a while for the proper conditions to be created to generate excess energy. And, and that electrolysis time uh, is a critical aspect of this phenomena that many people have ignored in the past. 
And finally, palladium, when it takes up deuterium, cracks. These cracks make it very difficult or prevent the palladium from achieving the high deuterium to palladium ratio. When people have now found ways of treating palladium so that it does not crack, the success rate has improved dramatically. Well, here's an example of the effect of the deuterium to palladium ratio provided by, Mc by McCrubery at SRI. You can see that when the composition, the D to PD ratio was relatively small, uh, the excess energy was very small. But as the composition increased, the power increased to as much as 6 watts. Not all samples are capable of getting to as high as 0.98, and so you, one would never get this amount of heat. But if a sample is capable of achieving that high composition, all studies show this relationship between the D to PD ratio and the amount of excess power. Here's another example provided by McCubrey. When material that could only get up to 0.9 was measured, 17 of the samples that were studied produced no heat. When material was found that could go from 0.9 to 0.95, nine of the samples produced no heat, but six did produce heat. And finally, when the rare samples that can get to 0.95 as, and as high as 1.05 were studied, all 15 of these samples made heat. Well, when a sample that's able to make excess energy is used in an electrolytic cell, this very characteristic behavior is found, that at low applied current, this is being the current density, no heat is produced until a very critical current density is reached. And only then is the excess power, shown on this axis, does it increase. When the experiment is run in light water, uh, this effect is not seen. Here's another example of this effect that compares a variety of samples. Well, first of all, notice that none of the samples show excess energy unless there is a crit unless a uh, critical current is applied. But once it's applied, the excess energy now rises at different rates. Well, this is caused because these samples have different areas, different shapes, and different amounts of the nuclear active material on their surface. But nevertheless, regardless of these conditions, this critical onset is always seen. Here's another comparison of a variety of samples. This time, it's the excess, the logarithm of the excess power against the current density. And notice again, we have this very low current, uh, very low amount of power at low current densities with an increase as the current density is increased. But all of the data appear to lie below a critical upper limit. In recent years, a few samples have fallen above this limit, but nevertheless, there does seem to be uh, an upper limit that can be uh, achieved in these cells, which is heavy water at uh, room, near room temperature. On the other hand, this data were obtained at high, at high uh, temperature using fused salt. Uh, this allowed a temperature of about 450 degrees centigrade to be used and resulted in much more heat production than was achieved near room temperature. People have run these electro electrolytic cells using heavy water near the boiling point, and they, at the boiling point, uh, result in higher energy also.